Uh, thank you very much, uh, last caller. Could I say, first of all, um, that when it came to designation of lands back over the years, designation, the easiest way to put it, equaled compensation. That if a farmer was to find his or her land be being designated for anything, for any designation being put on it, compensation for, should follow. Now, the one thing that I'd be terribly worried about in this is that all the time what seems to be happening is a farmer's rights to farm his or her land is being eroded. And it's as though that we're heading very near the day that if a farmer wants to come out the door in the morning of his or her house, and with their family members or maybe with help or maybe by themselves, if they want to do a job, they'll nearly have to fill up a farm to do it. If they want to get in a digger or sit up in a digger themselves or sit up in a tractor and do a job of work, they'll nearly have to come along and get permission for it. And that seems to be the road we're going down. That would be the concern that I and the other members of the Rural Independent Group would have on this issue. That would be the concern that we would have. We've always stated, and I've always stated, going back over many years, first of all on Kerry County Council, and then here in, in Dalian, that, for instance, farming by a calendar doesn't work. We've often had an August here that would be a lot wetter than a January. So when it came to agit agitating a tank, and spreading slurry, for instance, you might be in a way better position to do it in the height of the winter time than actually in the height of the summer time. That has happened to us here back over the years. So farming, take Helinder, and people who think you can farm take Helinder don't honestly know what they're talking about. It sounds fine, airy fairy, write it down, it looks good and it sounds good, but in practicality it has no common sense. The best people in the whole countryside to be the custodians of the countryside are to mind it, are to care for it, it because they're the real environmentalists. They're the people who own the countryside. They're the farmers. They're the people who are the opposite to the BBBs. And just in case you're wondering, last count caller, who the BBBs are, they are people who think that the countryside should be full of nothing only briars, badgers, and bullocks. And that's what they think we should have. But I know what I want us to have in the countryside is viable family farms, viable farm units that people can make a living or a part of a living out of the land that they've inherited. And these farmers, remember, they never ever look on their land, Minister, as an asset. They never look at it as any other thing or that, or that they are custodians of the countryside. They don't own it, they don't possess it, it's not a possession. It's something that thankfully might have been handed down from their parents or their grandparents or an, an uncle or an auntie that gave them the farm land. And all they are going to do with it is mind it, treasure it, try and improve it if they can and forward it on to the next new young people that will be coming up after them. And that's all people want to do. But the one thing that I'd be very mindful of when changes are being made, when new legislation is coming in, when bills are being passed through the doll, and when regulations come from Europe, we have to be so, so careful that we don't tie farmers' hands behind their back, that we don't put a, a milestone around them to hold them back and to tie them down, like, for instance, what is in the Climate Action Bill, which a lot of people try to deny, which is that in a very, very short length of time, in 2027, it's clearly stated that the spreading, the agitation and the spreading of slurry should be done by renewable methods. In other words, electricity, some type of renewable power. Now, the tractor that can pull a thousand or 1,500 or two or two and a half thousand gallons of slurry out of a yard operated by a battery isn't invented yet. That is a fact. It's not here yet. So these are the stupid, nonsensical regulations that are coming before farmers. And the only hope that they have 
is that people like us will stand up here inside in a forum like this and stand up for them. And I would be relying on the IFA, myself and Deputy Denny Healy Ray the other day, we had a meeting for over um, an hour and a half perhaps with the leadership of the Kerry IFA discussing climate issues because we are awful concerned, we are all singing off the same hymn sheet, whether it's the IFA, whether it's the ICMSA, whether it's uh, rural TDs, we want to all be standing shoulder to shoulder in support of in particularly small family farms. It's a very short length of time ago that we had ministers coming out and making statements that today they're completely contradicting. I remember being inside in, in the Dal Chamber when the then Minister for Agriculture, uh, the present Minister for Foreign Affairs, Minister Simon Coveney, he was encouraging young farmers in particular to progress and get bigger into milk and to buy more land, lease more land, get more uh, ability, bring in more cows that they could supply more milk. Now it's the exact opposite it and I mean what they're doing is they set people up to pull them back down again that's not right that's not fair I've been dealing with farmers recently who are really worried about the climate action bill and who are worried about what's going on now in the Dáil and how it's going to affect them because you must remember while we talk about small family farms I too represent bigger farmers who have borrowed a lot of money, big money, to improve their, um, their milking parlours, to, to buy more land and to progress and they are perfectly entitled to exist as well and we are there to speak up for those people as well, people who aren't just part time farmers but who indeed are very what I would call busy bigger type farmers and we, I'm there to represent all of them as the other members of the rural independent group are but it's so important that issues like this have to be tackled and we have to be very careful again with this whole designation issue and uh, and again what I would call tying farmers up in paperwork because God knows there's enough paperwork following farming as it is and the one thing we don't want is for it to get more complicated, more over um, in such a way that it, 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 that it would tie them up in knots and tie them up with more rules and more regulations that they already have plenty of. Uh, the one thing that we always hear uh, in, in, in our dealings with, with the farming sector of society is how in the name of God did that happen? Who in the name of God brought that in? Who voted for that? Who let that go through? So that's why, um, that's why it's so important um, that we have to be very, very uh, careful about what we are doing. And thank you very, very much, uh, Les Caller. Thank you, Deputy Deputy.